Well, here it is, folks. It's my story. Um, feeling pretty nervous and a little bit still embarrassed at the moment, so um, bear with me. And it's the first time I've ever done anything like this. Um, Try to do it with a smiley. Anyway, um, gambling. Even as a youngster, I used to gamble a little bit. Um, family things, cards, etc. Um, going into the slot machines when we was on holiday. And when I was 17, 18, I had a bit of a problem with slot machines. Luckily, um, by the time I was 19, I met my future wife and um, everything went positively. Lived, lived together, had kids, got married, eventually got a fantastic job and right up to my mid-40s, um, life was lovely and even started earning six, six figure incomes. So we had multitude of holidays, great lifestyle. Unfortunately got introduced to Betfair, online gambling, and suddenly things started to change. Um, I started to want to gamble more and more. Um, it's cost me everything, it cost me a marriage, it's potentially cost me a relationship since then. Um, it got that bad. And we're talking a lot of money in that I started actually stealing money. And eventually even got that bad that um, I... The really bad thing of um, a conscience became more important than the gambling in that I actually then whistleblowed myself and handed myself into the police. Unfortunately, even though the company didn't pass charges, 11 months later I got charged with fraud and subsequently um, spent some time with Her Majesty's. However, they can be good from bad and you can learn from your mistakes and you can change your behaviours. And from the moment I spent some time um, in Her Majesty's service, I decided to be very positive and look forward to the future and help others. Uh, in, in the meantime, I took several courses, counselling, mentoring, um, a fantastic Chrysalis programme course, which was very helpful. David Apri show, um, MBE, um, became my mentor. And I helped um, other inmates get through the same course uh, as, as what I went through. Then got out, was working. Um, before I got out, spent some time working with Bernardo's charity as well. And went back to live with my mum at the age of 52, which is very nice of her, but at the same time is, again, a little bit embarrassing because I, what I didn't tell you is that as a consequence to handing myself in, I went bankrupt, had nowhere to live, lived in my car for a while. Um, felt suicidal only for a very short space of time before getting myself back on my feet a little bit. Um, getting help from GAMCARE, getting help from the NHS through CBT, Cognition, Cognitive Behavioural Therapy. Anyway, getting out um, was very positive. I'm still very positive, although things are more difficult than you actually realise at the time. And it's taken a, a good six months to be in a position where I can talk about my past, um, what it's caused, not just devastation to myself, but more, more important to the family, the wider community, and it's not a nice place to be, to be fair. 
one thing I would say to to, to everyone that is contemplating um, stopping is that you can do it if you find a, a, a big enough reason to, to do it and you've got to find it yourself nobody else is going to find that reason for you um, but there is help out there even though it is hard to get the help in the first place which I, which I found hard um, I'm very much now looking forward to trying to help others to one stop gambling if they want to and two to not get into gambling if they see what it can do to other people like like myself um i truly believe i'll get back to being successful in in whatever i do um but i need help going forward the same as as, as everybody else and in that respect I, I want to give help back to other people i've started going on twitter um and basically made some really good connections and I'm, I'm even going to do a, 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 I never knew what vlogging was before, but a, a vlogging episode in a week's time um, with a, with a, um, an ex-gambler that's been clean now for nine years. Um, by the way, I've been clean for over two years, which is really, really encouraging. To be fair, um, if anybody out there wants to talk to somebody that has probably been through nearly as bad an episode as you, as you can um, I know other people that have gone a step further than, than, than myself and some people have actually lost lives for it so um, you have to think about the, those people as well I'm lucky even though financially I have nothing I believe that the whole experience puts me in a better shape to, to move forward and do some good to be fair and, and, help, and help others so look me up Mark Pickering and if you want to just talk to somebody um, ask questions get me to ask you some questions and you genuinely whether you're in pre-contemplation or you're contemplating or you've made a decision, then um, hopefully that all leads to you taking action. Um, but remembering at the same time that we can all relapse at, at any point. So it's just not a process that ever stops. It's an ongoing process, one step at a time. One everybody, I know it's a cliche, but everybody says one day at a time. Um, I'm still remorseful, but I'm starting to forgive myself. And um, you hope that people do not um, look too bad upon yourself. Um, it is an illness, and you need to come out the other side and fight and and make good for for what you did. And that's what I'm aiming to do. So. Um, Good luck to all them people out there that need the help and there is enough people out there that will, are willing to give help, I can see that now. So um, good luck and speak soon. Mark Pickering. Thank you.